They take characteristics of solid thorium and apply them to liquid thorium in the liquid fluoride thorium reactor, which is a molten salt reactor. Well, we know that there are three states of matter, solid, liquid, and gas. Casey likes to play with her ball when it is in solid form. I don't know if she would have much fun with it as a liquid. There, Casey, would you like to play? Maybe take a drink. It's not really her melted ball, just colored water. Let's review. Most commercial reactors today are solid fuel high pressure light water reactors. Solid fuel reactors utilize low enriched uranium, which is 95% uranium-238 and 5% uranium-235. The proposed nuclear reactor is the lifter, the liquid fluoride thorium reactor. Note that this next generation nuclear reactor uses liquid thorium as the fuel. In my three previous videos on nuclear energy, I performed both qualitative and quantitative analyses comparing lifter, which utilizes liquid thorium fuel, to the solid fuel high pressure light water reactors of today. I showed that the lifter has many safety advantages, is much more efficient, and produces much less radioactive waste. Know that these advantages only apply to liquid thorium used in the lifter. They would not necessarily apply to, for example, a light water high pressure reactor utilizing thorium as a solid fuel. Why would people want to use thorium as a solid fuel in a conventional reactor of today? Well, perhaps it's because they see the advantages of thorium and we have many of these types of reactors already. With some minor modifications, one could adapt their design to use thorium as a solid fuel. People are trying this in several other countries and even here in the U.S. But I think... Uh-oh! The form of matter makes a big difference! We are not going to get all of the advantages we would if we used liquid thorium! Let's take a look. These are some advantages of liquid thorium used in a lifter. Let's see which advantages we would lose if, say, for example, we used solid thorium in a high pressure light water reactor. Stable self-regulating reactions. We would lose this advantage because the solid fuel reactor has unstable reactions which require active control. Low pressure. We would lose this advantage because the solid fuel reactor requires high pressure. With liquid thorium in the lifter, no coolant is needed, and loss of power causes the molten material to safely cool to a stable form. There is no concept of a meltdown. We would lose this advantage because with thorium as a solid fuel in a high pressure light water reactor, coolant is required, and loss of power leads to dangerous overheating and potential radioactive contamination. Liquid fuel forms ionic bonds with salt, which are not damaged during the radiation, making the fuel efficiency very high. We would lose this advantage because solid fuel forms covalent bonds, and the fuel is damaged during the radiation and removed as waste. This makes the fuel efficiency quite low. Liquid thorium in the lifter produces a very small amount of radioactive waste. We would lose this advantage. Let me explain. Thorium as a solid fuel in a high pressure light water reactor would produce a bit smaller amount of radioactive waste than a conventional uranium reactor. This is due to the thorium fuel cycle where fewer transuranics are produced as I explained in my earlier video, Lifter Part 3. However, because thorium would be used as a solid fuel, it would be damaged during irradiation and removed as waste, and thus a large amount of radioactive waste would still be produced. No water is present. If flooding should occur, the radioactive materials are ionically bonded with the fluoride salt, which is not water soluble, so there is no radioactive cloud or groundwater. We would lose this advantage because with thorium as a solid fuel in a high pressure light water reactor, of course, water is used as a coolant. And during an accident, the water covalently combines with radioactive materials and could lead to widespread release. With liquid thorium as the fuel in a lifter, no hydrogen gas is present. 
we would lose this advantage if the solid thorium fuel was manufactured the same way as the uranium in conventional reactors with zirconium cladding. Zirconium reacts with steam at high temperatures to form hydrogen gas, which may cause explosions during an accident. So it seems that if solid thorium is used as a fuel, we don't get any of the advantages we would get if liquid thorium is used. Oh my goodness! Now it is true that the lifter is a totally different type of reactor than is typical today, but the fundamentals have been proven before. Alvin Weinberg pioneered the use of molten salt reactors at Oak Ridge National Labs. The ARE, or Aircraft Reactor Experiment, took place from 1954 to 1961. This reactor proved to be stable and self-regulating. The MSRE, or Molten Salt Reactor Experiment, took place from 1962 to 1973. This reactor was operational for a number of years, was also quite stable, and proved the viability of molten salt fuels. At the time, priorities were angled more toward making more material for nuclear weapons, and so the molten salt reactor was dropped in favor of solid fuel reactors. Now, after decades of experience with solid fuel reactors, we have new priorities, safety and minimizing radioactive waste. I think we should reconsider these types of liquid fuel molten salt reactor designs such as the lifter. What do you think, Casey? I think she agrees. I hope this talk has clarified some of the existing confusion about using thorium as a fuel for nuclear reactors. Liquid thorium will be able to provide us with many safety advantages, is much more efficient, and produces much less radioactive waste, while solid thorium fuel simply cannot do all these things. So the next time someone talks about nuclear energy, tell them about the liquid fluoride thorium reactor, and be sure they understand that it uses thorium as a liquid 